Hi, I'm Pat Freeman with Globe Manufacturing Company, and I'm talking here today with Dan Rosso. Dan is from Portland, Oregon, and Dan gave us a presentation on NFPA 1981. That's and correct. And I understand there's some changes coming down in the year 2012. Any idea what we might look forward to? Well, some of the changes we talked about yesterday are, are possible changes. Okay. There are certainly things that we have on the, on the uh, front burner as, as far as the things we're pursuing for changes. Um, a few of those are, are probably uh, first and foremost uh, that are, are probably going to be the most controversial and technologically difficult to deal with are going to be the escape systems. Mm -hmm. And what we're talking about specifically with escape, escape systems is are not just simply APRs, not air purifying respirators, but, but truly an escape system that incorporates uh, the ability to give you uh, breathable air in low oxygen or no oxygen environments as well as protection from obviously the, chemical, the fire chemicals. Uh, so that, that really is, is one of the first and foremost ones. The other one that again is going to be uh, seeped I think with a lot of controversy and, and, and work is going to be that of buddy breathers. Oh, okay. Uh, now as we, as we stand right now, theoretically and, and I guess legalistically, buddy breathers don't exist. Uh, but I think we, we know that in, 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 in practicality they do. Yep. And it really is not my intent at this time to advocate or try to discourage it as, as a subject. Uh, it really is just to try to get it on the table so right. that we're dealing with it up front. And you can have and some discussion about that's it. That's exactly right. Exactly. Because, yeah. you know, if, if ultimately uh, the fact that we can't really identify the fact that buddy breathers exist really stifles uh, ingenuity and, and, and innovative sure. ideas in developing good buddy breathers if in fact we're going to have them. So my intent as the chair of 1981 is to make sure that it gets on the table, mm -hmm. we, we openly discuss it and we try to resolve it and, and have some real solution. Either we do have them or we don't have them and if we do have them to really make them great. Yep. Well, I got to tell you, I made some notes, Dan. You talked about four main changes. You've described two. Okay. What can you tell me about communications? Communications is another one of those things, although uh, probably not as as uh, emotional yeah. in the sense of the battles that we're going to have, but, but certainly taxing technologically. Yeah. Uh, the issues we're dealing with that make it very difficult is because there's many different a facet to communication with SCBA. As I mentioned before, some have to do with face-to-face -face communication, and I think we've really, uh, we've really got a handle on that pretty well with some of the tests we've done in the past. Yep. Um, the others have to do with, with uh, SCBA to radio communication, okay. SCBA radio communication to radio communication to SCBA, and then the other component that's just coming in the last year or two has been that of uh, the change from analog radio to digital radio and how the potential interference of different components on SCBAs might interfere with that digital packaging. And so though that's, that's a very, very difficult and complex, technically uh, challenging uh, element that we'll be working with, but not quite as emotional yep. as the other two. Now, the last one I wrote down was lighter weight, and that was something you thought was very important, too. It is. You, you know, we, we did a survey years ago, as I said. It was called the Crystal Vision Survey, and uh, it, it, it was number two in, in, uh, in all the responses that we got back on the survey was lighter weight. Right. And uh, we have been working very aggressively to try to reduce the weight on SCBAs. It's a really a burden. We carry all of our air on, on our back. back. Yep. Um, and, and it's a fine line because with technology the way it is, every time we try to reduce weight, we, we tend to lose a little bit of the robustness of the, of the SCBA. And, and so to find that line between us destroying the system and having lighter weight, you know, obviously, as, as Rich Duffy indicated today, some new or yesterday, some new technologies are, are coming into play that really might have a tremendous impact on that weight issue. So it, it's just a, it's kind of on our plate all the time, every cycle, is to try to somehow find new technologies to reduce weight. Yep. Well, I know you're looking for firefighter input. Is yes. there a way that firefighters could get a hold of you if they wanted, had some input to share? You know, as I said before, um, 
they can certainly access NFPA.org. Okay. And that will give them the proposal forms. It'll give them a heads up as to the dates and the deadlines for the proposal cycles. Uh, but, but I really want to emphasize the fact that if they want to contact me, yes. and I mean that, and I know that I'm opening up a door <laughs> for that, but I'm willing to open up that door, they can contact me at my fire station. Uh -huh. uh, I'll give them my direct office number that goes direct to me, doesn't go to anybody else. Wow. And that's area code 503-823-1165. Okay. And they can, they can call me anytime and I'll get back to them. Well, you are obviously very dedicated, Dan. Thank you so much for talking to us. You're so welcome. Okay. Thank you.